Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. When you have it, say amen. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Then we turned and took our journey unto the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn and go northward. And command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for possession. Ye shall buy meat of them for money that ye may eat, and ye shall also buy water of them for money that ye may drink. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hands. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness these forty years. The Lord God, the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked. The Lord God has blessed thee in all the works of thy hands. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness these 40 years. The Lord thy God has been with thee, and you have lacked nothing. Somebody say, more to do, farther to go. Bless this word, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I'm going to try to move along real quick. Listen, have a seat. Deuteronomy is, is, is an interesting book because it is known theologically and bibliography as the, as the second telling of the law. You must understand, and, and you got to get this for the first few minutes, otherwise you'll miss it later on. Moses is talking to grown people who were children when their parents came out of Egypt. Somebody say amen. He's talking to people who are grown now. Some were not even born when, when they came out of Egypt. It's the same way as we're celebrating our, our anniversary. It is 12 years and we're celebrating all that God has done. There are some people who were not born when this church was built. But they're sitting in it now. There's some people, some of you in here were here when, when Overseer and Pastor Kidd had to raise the money to, to, to build the building and to get the chairs. Some of y'all remember that, right? Y'all remember. If you've ever been part of a building fund of a church, you remember the sacrifices you had to make, the, 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 the coat you didn't buy because you gave that money to the church, the vacation you didn't go on because you gave that money to the church. And you remember what it took to do what has to be done. But there are people that come along later who did not make those sacrifices who, lead and listen, get to enjoy the sacrifices you have made. There are people sitting here right now who never had to pay for these light bulbs, who never had to pay for the chairs, never had to pay for the carpet. That's why you should be honored to be able to be part of the 500 Club. Because you now get a chance to be a part of something that you just stepped into. Be a part of something that other people worked and sacrificed for. Now you get a chance to, as the scriptures say, put your shoulder to the plow and push. Somebody say push. Somebody say push. So Moses is talking to grown folk who were children or were not even born when their parents came out of Egypt. And sometimes when you, when you are the recipient of blessings that you did not work for, you don't really appreciate it the way you should. Somebody who know what I'm talking about say amen. And so Moses is telling these grown folk as they're preparing to go into the promised land, he's reminding them of stories that they either did not hear or only learned as they were children so that they would go in armed with some information about who their God is. 
Can I tell you, you can face anything if you know who your God is. Is there anyone in here who's ever faced some crises or some problems or some issues and the only reason you made it out was because you knew who your God is? Is Can I tell you something? The enemy sends all kind of stuff to try to stop you from remembering who your God is. And if he, if he can convince you that God is no longer with you, you throw in the towel. But I came to remind you who your God is. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first. And those of you that are going through right now, you need to remember who your God is. Just somebody shout, I remember, I remember. Oh, no, 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 that's not good enough. Look up to God and shout, I remember. I know who you is. Trouble can't make me stop forget remembering who you is. I know that's not good English, but that's how I feel it. And, and so he's reminding them who God is. And he tells them, he says, you know, God turned us away from, from the Red Sea and he brought us to, to Mount Seir and he had us surround Mount Seir many days. And finally, he told us, you have encompassed this mountain long enough. It's time to, Pastor Manning, go forward. It's time to go. I almost used that text this morning. But, 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 but the, the idea is you have, you have done a lot. You, you have encountered issues and you have survived them. You have dealt with problems and you have survived them. But God wants to remind us as a church that as much as we have done, as much as has been accomplished, there's still more to do. So I shout more to do. See, he says, you, you've encompassed this mountain long enough. You need to go northward. You need to go forward because you cannot live your life resting on your laurels. You cannot live your life resting on your testimony. Do you know why you have a testimony? So that it will give you courage to go forward for the next challenge in life. Do you know why God reminds you of the things he's done for you? So that when the next crisis comes up, you can say, though he slay me, Yet will I trust him. Do you know why God allows you to go through stuff? So that when the next thing come back, you can say, oh, that ain't nothing. Is there anybody here or anybody watching who's been through some stuff that, that after a while when the devil tries to do stuff, you look up and say, what's that? Come, you got you kind of come better than that. If, if you're going to bring me down, you got to come better than that because I've been through too much and I know who my God is. So, so, so he says, he said, that I, I love this. He said, he, he told them, in verse 4 and 5, he said, he told them, go by the coast of your brethren Esau. I love this. He said, and they're going to be afraid of you. He said, but just because they're afraid of you doesn't mean you should take advantage of them. Oh, that's a word right there. He, he says, they have heard what has happened, and the children of Esau are going to be afraid of you. He says, but just because they're afraid of you, don't mess with them. He says, don't meddle with them. Oh, I like that. I like that. He says, meddle not with them. In other words, th th there are some things you could say, don't say it. Th th there are some fights you could win, don't fight it. Th th there are some things going on that, that, he, that, 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 that you have, could have the victory. He says, don't do that. L look at it. It's the text right there. He says, don't meddle with them. Shut up. Leave them alone. He says, because, listen, listen, he says, because even they are not, even though they are not my chosen people, they have a promise from me. Look at the text. He says, I, I love this. He says, he says, don't meddle with them, for I'm not going to give you their land, not so much as a foot's breath. Oh, I love God. See, what we don't understand as human beings is God can keep his word to you and also keep his word to the person next to you. See, we think because we're finite that it's a zero-sum game, that all has to be here. Or, no, no, no. God is so much God that he can bless you and bless your neighbor. He is so much God. He can keep his promise to you and keep his promise to your neighbor. He says to them, they're afraid of you, but don't mess with them. I'm not going to give you any of that. No, 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 that's amazing. Because if they're afraid of you, that means it's going to be an e easy fight. But God says, just because it's an easy fight, don't mean you should fight it. 
I'm not giving you any of them, not so much as a foot. Oh, I love that. And he said, look, he says, here's why. Because I've given their land to Mount to Esau as a possession. I promised you something. But what I promised you does not mean I'm going to take from them. They can still have what I promised them while I still give you what I promised you. Oh, Lord. See, I, I want to tell somebody, don't be jealous of anyone. Don't be competitive with anyone because God is so much God. He's got enough to bless you and the people around you. I need somebody to give God a praise right there. I need you to praise God because I want you to remember that God's got all power. And he can bless you and. Somebody shout and. He can bless you and somebody else. That's why in this church, we don't get upset when God blesses people. Matter of fact, we rejoice with those that rejoice. Because if God is in a blessing mood, and if he's blessing in this church, he might be blessing on row number three. But that's okay, I'm going to stay on row five. Because at some point, he's going to get to five. Somebody in here, I want to declare over you prophetically, God says, don't move, don't move, because I am getting ready to release blessings all over this place, all over this room, all over this church. If you believe it, look up and say, here I am, Lord. Okay, move on, Douglas, move on, move on. You can't have their land because I've given it to Esau. Now, now I don't have time, but, but do you not understand that Esau was not one of God's favorites? You all know the story of Esau and Jacob. And even though Esau messed up, God says, I still got something for you. See, see, see we don't understand how God is, how good God is. We, God, God says, Esau, you, you, you gave up your birthright. You did not respect what I have given you. But even though you messed up, I still got something for you. I know there's some of us in here who are glad that God still got something for us. That, that even when we didn't do it all right, he still got something for us. I know there's some people watching right now who in your living room or in your bedroom, you can recount some stuff you did that you shouldn't have done and, and God should have wiped you out. But God said, that's all right. I still got something. Somebody who's grateful that God still got something for them. Put your hands together, open your mouth and say, thank you. My Lord. Okay, okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I love the Bible. He says, he says, not only am I not going to give you, you shouldn't meddle with them. He said, I want you to support them. Verse 6. Look at verse 6. Buy meat from them. Don't go take it. Buy the meat from them so you can eat. Go buy water from them so you can drink. In other words, you, you are going to support their economy. You are going to help them in their economy. You're going to get something from them, but you're not going to take it. Now, this is crazy because there are other times God says, go in and take it. Go in and conquer the land and take everything they have. Take their livestock. Take their, take their chickens. Take their goats. Take their lambs. Take their sheep. But, but, but God says, this, this time, don't take it. Pay for it. There are some things God wants you to pay for. Oh, it got quiet. It got quiet, Lord. It got quiet on me. It got quiet on me. Because we always want God to give us a hookup. We always want God to do something for us, to lower the price. We always want God to give us a sale. But there are some things in life you've got to pay for. Because it's good for you. It's good for you. To do it because, because sometimes if you keep getting everything cheap, you stop valuing something. There's a story, there's a story when, 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 God, when God cursed the land because David numbered the troops. The, the Bible says that, that they came to around this threshing floor. And on the threshing floor, God, David wanted, to buy, David wanted to, to buy the threshing floor from around her. And around her was so honored that the king wanted his land to, to make a sacrifice to God. He said, no, 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 king. I, king David, I will give you my land so you can make the sacrifice. And David said, no! I will not give to God that which cost me nothing. See, 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 that's a lost, that's a lost uh, principle in the 21st century because all of us want it for cheap. And if we could get it for free, 
But some things in God are not cheap. And some things in God are not free. Some things you got to pay for. And some things you got to pay daily for. The anointing is not cheap. The call of God on your life is not cheap. The, 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 the God using you mightily is not cheap. It costs you. Some things you ought to pay for. Because it, it, it shows to God that you value. David said, yes, you could give it to me. He said, yes, I'm the king and I could take it. But I will not give to God that which cost me nothing. I remember one time years ago, I was, I, I was a younger man, and, 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 and there was something going on in, 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 in the church, and, and some, somebody was, was going to give me some money to do something for it. And I said, no, I want to do it myself. I want to do it myself. Wasn't, wasn't a lot of money looking back now, but at that point, you know, you look back over your life, there's a time when $100, you used to go search it in the cushions to find change. And, and I remember, I, I was like, no, 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 because Bishop had just preached this text a few, few months or years before, and, and I remember I said, no, 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 I will not give to God that which costs. That's why, by the way, by the way, that's why anniversaries are so important. Because, because, yes, the church will make it without your giving. If you decide not to give, we're going to be all right anyway. You know how I know that? Because we've been all right before you got here. The bills were paid before you got here. The chairs were here before you got here. So, so when the anniversary comes around and it's time to give, it's not because we need it. It's because you need to sow in. You need to do it because if everything you get comes free or cheap, you don't value things. And God said, don't take their meat. Don't take their water. Pay for it. Look at your neighbor and say, pay for it. Do you not know there's something about sacrificial giving that, 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 that opens up God's hearts toward you so that when you need God to move, he will do stuff for you that you could have never imagined. Let me tell you, I've learned this. We've learned this. The, the seed that you give, and I'm really not trying to push the offering. I really am not. Believe me, I am not. But it fits. The seed that leaves your hand does not leave your life. When you give to God and to the things of God and to the prophets of God, it doesn't leave your life. It comes back to bless you in ways you could not have imagined. He said, don't take it from them. Pay for it. And then here we go. And I'm going to shout now. I haven't, I haven't shouted yet. That was just the preamble. Uh, uh, he said, he said he, he, here's why. He says, here's why you ought to pay for it. Because God has blessed you. I want to tell some people who are listening tonight, today, and who are listening online, God has blessed you. Look over your life. L look at where, see, see, it's, we, we measure incorrectly. Usually, we measure where we are, or we measure against Jeff Bezos, or, 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 or Elon Musk, or those. Here's how you measure how good God's been to you. Look at where you started. Look at where you start, look how far you have come. From, is there anybody here that can look back over their life and see that, you know what? Ain't nothing but God has helped me when I think about where I started, when I think about what I grew up in. And see, some of us, every now and again, every now and again, I pull out pictures and try to show my children where, and they can't understand. Lord, they see it, but they, Greg, you know what I'm talking about. They see it, but they can't understand it. They, I, I used to drive them by the house I used to live on in, in, in Bushwick, and, and they see it, but they can't understand it because they can't believe where we are now compared to where we came from. But I want to talk to some grateful people who are able to look back over their life and see where they started uh, and see how bad it was. Uh, and there were many people in your town uh, never made it out. Uh, many people in your area 
died. Some of them became drunks and they're still drinking on the same corner where they were 30 years ago. Some of them went to jail. Some of them died. But look what the Lord has done in your life. Look how far you've come. And you've only come that far because the Lord has blessed you. He blessed your going out and he blessed your coming in. He blessed you when you tried stuff that other people tried and failed. And I came to remind you uh, that you have been blessed by God. Uh, and that's why uh, when you see where you are today, uh, don't despise uh, the day of small beginnings because uh, you started small, but baby, God has made you large. Uh, look at your life. Uh, look at your house. Uh, look at your closet. Uh, look at your car. Look at the things going on in your life. Some things you never thought uh, you'd ever have. But the Lord has been good. But the Lord has blessed you. I need a praise from everybody who can look back over their life and acknowledge God has blessed me. Throw up your hand and give him a praise. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. He blessed me. He's blessed me. He's, I don't have everything I want yet, but the Lord has blessed me. Go high five three people. Tell them he's blessed me. He's blessed me. Tell three people he's blessed me. Tell three people he's blessed me. Uh, notice, he says, here's why you can pay for it. Pay for the meat. Pay for the water. Here's why. Because God blessed you. And he blessed you when it wasn't always good. Next point. He says, the Lord has blessed thee all the works of thy hand. Look, the next part. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. He blessed you in the wilderness. He blessed you when you weren't in the best of situations. He blessed you in a place where there was no growth. He blessed you in a place where there was no vegetation. Are you, you hearing what I'm saying? As you look back over your life, as we look over the life of this church, we know that there have been times that it's been rough, but God has blessed us even in the wilderness. I hear him saying, I'll make streams in the desert and rivers in the, in the dark places. Why? Because God is able to take care of you even in your wilderness condition. And perchance somebody is in a wilderness condition today, God sent me to tell you, just hang on in there. Because I'm going to take care of you even in the wilderness. I know how to take care of people in a difficult situation because I am the God of the mountain, but I'm also the God of the valley. I'm God of the victory, but I'm God in the middle of defeat. I need somebody to give God a praise for being God of your wilderness. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. See, if your God is only God in the mountaintop, but he's not God in the valley, then he ain't much of a God. If God can only take care of you when things are going well and not take care of you when things are going badly, he ain't much of a God. But he says to them, I bless you even though you had some wilderness experiences. God, I feel like preaching now. He, he says to tell you, even in your wilderness, I could take care of you. Even when all hell is breaking loose in your life, I could take care of you. Even when you're walking in the midst of a wilderness, God says, I'm still God. Oh, I want to tell somebody. He says to tell you, I'm still God. Mm -hmm. And then he says, he says, he says, so I bless you even while you were in your difficult wilderness. And he said, look at this. All these 40 years, I want to say to DBC, all these 12 years. Now, hey, 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 there's been some stuff that's happened that y'all don't know. There's, there's been some crashes that y'all don't know. But, but through it all, every wilderness experience, God has blessed. When we first got together, there was a question as to whether or not it would work. 
when we first got together, people were making bets and talking. Them two churches can't come together. But 12 years later, look what the Lord has done. We've had people come in here and they can't tell who was former this or former that. You know why? Because even in the middle of the wilderness, God forged us together. And now we are day bar. Bethlehem, I need every day of our Bethlehem to give God a praise right now. Now we give God praise because God was able to do what other people thought could not be. See, some of y'all don't know. You don't know the things that were being said. You don't know the best that were being made. But look what the Lord, I said, look what the Lord, I said, look what the Lord, He said, you walked through the wilderness for these 12 years, DBC. He says, but here's the, the, almost the last thing. He says, but the Lord thy God has been with me. There ain't nothing like knowing that the Lord, your God, is with you. Come hell or high water, that the Lord, your God, is with you. And notice, if you look at the authorized, it's the Lord your God, Jehovah your Elohim. Jehovah is the covenant name of God. If you see it, it says all caps, L-O-R-D. That's the, that's the translation of the word Jehovah or Yahweh. Same thing. It means the God who makes and keeps covenants. I'm so glad that God makes and keeps covenants. I'm so glad that the God we serve is a maker and a keeper. I want to say that again. I'm so glad that the God we serve is a maker and a keeper. Some of y'all sitting here and some of y'all watching there, you are only made because of him. And the good news is after he made you, he kept you. Is there anybody here or anybody watching who will give God praise for making you and keeping you? He made you and he kept you. Life tried to pull you, but he kept you. People try to disown you, but he kept you. People try to stop you, but he... You ought to praise him because he's a maker and a keeper. And if he's kept you before, he's going to keep you again. Somebody shout it. Well, the Lord thy God has blessed thee. Uh Uh-huh, that's good. The Lord thy God has walked with you through the wilderness. That's good. The Lord thy God has been with thee all these years. That's good. But here's the last point. I'm going to shout and go home. He said, actually, I'm not going home. I'm going out to preach. I got to go preach. Thank you for reminding me. Father, I forgot I had to go preach this evening. That would have been a bad thing if I didn't say that. That would have been a bad thing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, he's blessed us. Somebody say blessed us. Uh, he's walked with us. He's been with us. And then look at the last clause of the seventh verse. He says, he says, he says, it says, the Lord thy God has been with thee. Thou hast lacked. I shouldn't even have to preach this point. That with all you've been through, with all of your wilderness experience, With all of the time that took, you thought things would have happened quicker than it happened. And with all that's gone on in your life, here is the bottom line. You have lacked. God's been a good God. And you have lacked nothing. You know how I know that? Some of your clothes are too small. You know how I know that? Your closet is too full. You know how I know that? Because God has been good to you. And you might not have everything, but you lack. I said you might not have everything, but you lack nothing. You might not have all that you want, but you lack nothing. You might be waiting on some stuff, 
but you've lacked. I need a praise from everybody who will acknowledge I might not have everything, but I lack nothing. God has been good. He's blessed me. He's been with me. And I've lacked. I need everybody. Jump to your feet. Throw up your hands. Open your mouth and praise your God. Praise him. I lack nothing. Yeah. I don't have everything, but I lack nothing. And whatever I need, he will supply. I said whatever I need, he will supply. Because he's that kind of God. I lack nothing. Say it with me. I lack nothing. Say it with me. I lack nothing. Say it again. I lack nothing. One more time. Say I lack nothing. Yeah, Ramosha. Yeah, na 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 Ramosha. Yeah, na 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 Ramosha. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. Whatever I don't have, I don't have it yet. Whatever's not in my hand, it's not in my hand yet. But until it comes, here's my confession. I lack nothing. I lack Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah! So here we go. Here we go, DBC. Twelve years. We begin a celebration of twelve years. We've done a lot, but there's more to do, and there's further to go. I said there's more to do, and there's further to go. Listen to me. While what Moses was saying was wonderful, you lack nothing. But here's the thing. Even though you lack nothing, Israel, I still got to take you into the promised land. <laughs> You lacked nothing. In the wilderness, you lacked nothing. I took care of your shoes. The Bible says their shoes didn't run out in the wilderness. You know you break up them shoes because you got them bad feet. In a week, you can mess up your shoes. But the Bible says their the, the shoes lasted 40 years. Their clothes lasted 40 years. They lacked nothing. And God says, as good as I've been, you lacking nothing. Hey, get this. I still haven't brought you into the promise yet. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all didn't. Is there anybody here that's got the faith to grab what I'm saying? As good as I've been, and the fact that you lack nothing, but you still haven't stepped into the promised land. And in the promised land, I told you, you will have houses that you did not build. Vineyards that you did not plant. I'm going to give you stuff you didn't work for. Why? Because you weren't afraid to pay for it. Uh, that's why I love God God says you didn't lack nothing but I still got more for you I see everybody don't have the faith to believe this because some people you satisfy with what God did for you and I'm fine with you that's good but I want to talk to those of us who say God as good have you been I want you to be gooder do I have any gooders out here? As good as you've been, I want you to be gooder. As much as you've blessed me and I lack nothing, I, I, I may want more clothes, but Lord knows I got a lot of clothes. I may want a different car, but Lord, I got a car. I might want to go, I've lacked nothing. N none of us in here have lacked. But God says, as good as I've been, there's still the promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey. 
A land where the grapes are so big, they're like pomegranates. Hey, a land that I've had waiting for you all this. Shut up, Douglas. Shut up, Douglas. Shut up, Douglas. Dismiss the people. Okay, okay. So I came to tell you as we embark into this 12th anniversary, God's been good, but there's more to do. We've accomplished a lot, but there's farther to go. And the reason we have to go farther is because God never intended for us to just stay in the wilderness. From the beginning, he intended to take us. He did not bring us out this far to take us back again. Y'all don't know that one, right? He brought us out to take us in to the promised land. Don't let nothing keep you from your promised land. Don't let nothing keep you from stepping and walking into the promise. This promise that he had had reserved for you. It might take a while, but that's all right. It just means there's more to do and there's farther to go. Put your hands together. Give God some praise. Listen, we're getting ready to go home, but, but I, w- I want to challenge some of you that are here today to get deeper in God. Why? Because you've lacked nothing following him. And he wants to do more. He is, just, just say it, Curtis, don't get excited, just say it. He is your Jehovah Jireh. Mm. I'm showing great discipline right now. He is your Jehovah Jireh. Has he provided for any of us out here? He's provided and he's not done providing. His provision has brought you to this point and you've lacked nothing. Imagine what's going to happen when you step into the next season of your life. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider and his grace ooh, is sufficient. Do me a favor, put your hands together, give, some, give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. <laughs>